Let's quickly take a question from Lagos now. Jim Ling. Oh, yes, thank you, Mark. Well, I'd like to ask um, His Excellency, I mean, you engaged uh, with some of the key stakeholders in the process. We saw images of you talking to some of the candidates, the electoral body. And in terms of what you've seen, are you satisfied with the level of independence displayed by those institutions that participated? I think, I think by and large, yes. So you're right. I, I saw INEC, um, I saw INEC uh, before the election. Uh, I saw the uh, police commissioner in Ekiti State uh, when, uh, uh, just before the election as well. Um, I saw some of the security agencies. Um, uh, they told me, of course, that they are neutral, that they are um, in, uh, in the position to provide the right kind of environment. Um, from my personal observation, I would say uh, that worked effectively. Um, as we were saying earlier, there have been uh, some uh, cases of voter inducement. I think that's a, 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 an issue which definitely needs to be addressed. But in terms of the process itself and how I observed it, I would say yes, uh, those, uh, those organizations remain neutral, uh, remained above the political fray, and uh, that's exactly how it should be. Well, because there are lots of comments that made the rounds now about a certain tweet that was set up and put out by the EFCC concerning the governor of Ekiti State. So one wonders, when they tell you that we're going to be as independent as required of us, and then you see that kind of tweet, what goes through your mind? Do you think that that still exhibits the same level of independence which you were told they were going to exhibit? Well, I heard about the tweet. Um, I also know that it was deleted uh, shortly afterwards, and I saw a statement from EFCC saying that that tweet did not represent the views of uh, the EFCC, which uh, remains uh, a neutral and independent uh, body. Um, I was concerned that the, the tweet came out. Um, I'm pleased that that uh, correction was, uh, was put out in a statement by EFCC. Uh, I went to see the chairman or the acting chairman of the EFCC just a few weeks ago and I made that very point about the importance of the EFCC and of course INEC and the other institutions of the state to remain uh, neutral, not to be partisan, not to uh, get involved in any uh, political debates, discussions, hostility, intimidation, you name it. Uh, and uh, I was given an assurance by the acting chairman uh, Mr. Magu, that that was indeed the uh, position, the approach of uh, the FCC to remain neutral. Um, uh, so I, I'm pleased about the correction. Uh, I think the original tweet was unfortunate, um, but I'm pleased about the correction um, and pleased that they have stated now very clearly uh, that the FCC um, will remain an independent, uh, an independent body um, that will follow the law uh, and that will follow the correct judicial process. Your Excellency, 242 billion naira, that's what uh, the president is proposing will be the cost of the 2019 general elections. Does that in any sense uh, point to the fact that perhaps our democratic process is being monetized? Well, I think there's a difference between the election process and the cost of the election process and what the parties are spending on the election campaign. So let's make a difference, but a distinction between uh, those two things. That is uh, clearly 242 billion naira is a lot of money. Um, it is a big country. It is a complex operation, as I saw for myself in Ekiti in terms of the number of polling units, the card readers, etc. Uh, I can I can well believe that uh, it's expensive. I don't know what the breakdown is. I don't know exactly how that would how would how that would be spent. Um, but it does seem to me to be a lot of money. And I know that some studies have happened describing or demonstrating that. Uh, per voter, Nigerian elections are extremely expensive compared to many other places. So I think that needs to be looked at. I mean, are there ways in which uh, you could spend less money um, but still have a rigorous process? Not for me to give answers to that question, but I think it is something that needs to be looked at. High Commissioner, concerning the breakdown uh, of this uh, 242 billion that we're talking about, clearly it's unavailable at the moment, but you know, when you look at the infrastructural deficits, uh, the logistics of getting uh, the items and materials to various polling units around the country, the, the deficits even in terms of the security apparatus and how well they're equipped, how well they're trained, 
in view of what you understand about how much it costs to conduct an election in, for example, the UK, how do you think this, uh, this looks, at least from eye level, given all of the deficits in the country? Well, democracy is an expensive process. It's expensive for the UK, it's expensive for any, any country, and it's really important that the process uh, is carried out uh, in, a, in a free, fair, and credible, and of course peaceful way. That takes money, so it's not for me to say this is too much or too little. Um, I, I, I think it does need to be looked at. There are logistical issues, there are uh, you know, difficulties of, of infrastructure that you mentioned. So I can well believe that it is an expensive process here. Um, but are there ways in which this could be streamlined? Are there, are there ways in which um, you know, materials could be reused? I don't know. These are, these are questions which uh, I think ought to be asked so that, uh, if possible, the uh, total amount is, is reduced. But you know, I can't provide a, a solution to that. Uh, I just think that um, the, the, the money needs to be looked at. But in, if, mm -hmm. if, just if, 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 if having looked at all of that and the processes and the complexity of an election, a general election here, um, dictates that that's the price that, it would, that has to be paid, well, that's the price that has to be paid. Mm. Mm. I mean, because this also includes the amount that uh, security agencies are asking for. I think I saw the DSS figure at 12 billion plus. The police was asking for close to 30 billion or so. Uh, but let me quickly ask you to, you know, intervene, Mr. Eric. Well, are you also concerned about, you know, the amount we're seeing be earmarked for the conduct of the 2019 elections? Yeah, so we're going to continue to have this as long as we operate this over centralized system. Uh, so we cannot fairly compare it to a place like UK, for instance, where local councils uh, conduct their elections. Um, so in Nigeria, where our things are over centralized, the security is very centralized, the electoral process is centralized. So this is not an issue to debate this particular amount because I'm sure that this is probably not what INEC has even asked for. Perhaps this is what has been rationed, you know, by the executive. Uh, so, and we don't even know what the National Assembly will eventually approve. Uh, so for me, it's, it's not to look at this, it's to look at our system holistically. How do we unbundle things? How do we put credit? You, you realize that we still have the debate in terms of electoral reforms, whether INEC should conduct local government elections, which yeah. state independent electoral commissions are conducting, that we see the kind of things that comes out from such processes. Is the winner takes it all. So we as citizens of Nigeria need to develop credible process. We need to hold our political office holders, our duty bearers accountable so that our processes will be decentralized and there will be credibility at the local unit. Well, that's just the question is when we've looked at the decentralized examples like the state independent electoral commissions, we find that they're not very independent. So how, how do you ultimately get around that fact? Yeah, so, so that, that's what I'm saying. It's not just to say, oh, let's have state police. Uh, let's have things done at the state level, local level. We need to have infuse credibility into such processes. We need to use the laws that are in place to make sure that people are held accountable. We need to deploy technology that helps our processes to be easier, more effective, for instance, electronic voting and all the rest of it, and also taking evidence of malfeasance, of malpractices, real time, so that we can get people to pay for their crimes. Until we do this, the impunity will just continue. I will keep pushing money at it and we're not getting the best results. Well, that's all we'll have to call it a wrap. We have to thank you most kindly for coming on Sunrise Daily. Your Excellency uh, Paul Arkwright, British High Commissioner to Nigeria, thank you. Mr. Sulaiman Arigbabu, who is the Southwest Coordinator of the Transition Monitoring Group, thank you for sharing your thoughts with thank us you. this morning on Sunrise Daily. The program will continue shortly, and we'll be speaking with one of the major actors in the uh, conduct of the AKT elections, which is an INEC official. There are definitely plenty of questions to pose, so we ask you to keep it locked down here on Sunrise Daily. Please stay with us.